Number 10. Failed Robbery Prank Timothy Wilkes plotted one of the most reckless pranks ever. Timothy and one of his friends wanted to film the reactions people had when they were being robbed at knife point. It doesn't take a genius to realize this is a horrible prank to pull off on people. If you're going to pretend to rob a stranger with a fake knife, chances are some of those strangers are not going to react very well. And that's exactly what happened. The two friends chose the parking lot of an urban air store in Hermitage to do their robbing, and that's when everything went horribly wrong. Timothy and his friend decided to pull the prank on a group of people hanging out in the parking lot. The prank didn't go quite as planned. Timothy pulled out his knife, and one of the people he was trying to rob pulled out a gun. His name is David Starnes Jr., and he felt threatened enough to pull out a very real weapon and shoot Timothy Wilkes dead on the spot. And to be fair, it's technically self-defense since Timothy did pull out a knife on a complete stranger. And as if the prank wasn't bad enough, with Timothy Wilkes dead, his friend may be facing some time in prison for his participation in it. Even though it was a prank, they did try to commit a fake robbery, and that led to his friend being murdered. Number 9. Eggs of Death In the worst egging prank ever, a teenager has been charged with murder. Normally throwing eggs does not lead to people dying. In fact, throwing eggs has been a teenage tradition for decades. But in Houston, Texas, the 14-year-old went a little too far. He hasn't been identified for privacy reasons but he was behind the wheel of a vehicle in which two of his passengers were tossing eggs out of their windows at other cars. The other drivers on the road were obviously furious, and one particularly angry person began to chase the teenagers. The person sped after them through the streets, which prompted the teenage driver to run through a red light. When he ran the red light, he hit another vehicle and killed the woman inside, a completely innocent bystander. The victim was 45-year-old Sylvia Zavala, who had just been out shopping and was on her way home. The teens in the car didn't receive any serious injuries. The driver who had actually been chasing the teenagers hasn't had any legal action taken against him. It looks like the only person getting in any serious trouble is the driver. At only 14 years old, it's safe to say the rest of his life isn't looking so great. The police haven't announced the boy's sentence, but he could be spending the rest of his teenage years locked behind bars. Number 8. Stop Sign Fail you would think that by the time you hit your 20s, you would stop cooking up dangerous pranks. Yet for three friends, they lived for coming up with the craziest prank they could think of. Their last prank was so nuts that it landed them 15 years in prison. The kids thought it would be funny if they removed a stop sign as part of a prank and then watched the destruction that ensued. They had anticipated maybe a small car crash, but they hadn't expected that three teenagers would drive directly into the path of a massive eight-ton truck all three teens were killed because of the accident, and the three pranksters were charged with manslaughter. It was honestly one of the most shocking court cases involving a prank. Judge Bob Mitchum said it best when he told the defendants, there are no winners in this case. The dead teenagers were all 18 and had been heading home after a night of bowling. Since there were no stop sign at the intersection, they didn't even think about slowing down. They blew right into the intersection where the huge truck broadsided them. Originally, the recommended sentence was 50 years each in prison. However, the judge understood that it was just a prank, and so he sentenced each of them to only 15 years. By the time they get out, hopefully they'll be done with their pranking ways. Number 7. Under the Lawnmower A Halloween prank didn't turn out quite the way it was planned when the police were phoned and paramedics were scrambled. Somebody in rural North Carolina thought it would be funny to put a fake torso underneath a lawnmower and then sprinkle the torso with fake blood. To those who were driving by, it either looked like a funny Halloween decoration or a very real dead person who had been run over by their lawnmower. But perhaps the most unsettling part about the prank was that whoever did it didn't put any other decorations in the yard. There was nothing to indicate it was a prank. There were no skeletons, no Halloween signs, literally nothing except what appears to be a dead person. Well, somebody passing by thought there had been a terrible accident. They called 911, gave their location, and then even tried to rescue the person underneath the lawnmower. Imagine his distress when he moved the lawnmower and uncovered a dummy. Not only was he embarrassed, he was angry. The police and ambulances had to be canceled, and he drove away fuming. He didn't even have anyone to blame because the lawn where the prank was set up was beside a driveway leading to a small community of houses. Anyone could have done it. There was no way to figure out who actually did the prank. What would you do if you saw this very scene while driving down the road? 
Would you stop to call the police or simply keep going? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to hit subscribe. Number six, sparkler through the window. The police recently arrested an 18-year-old kid named Eric Morelli in connection with the shocking death of Kristen Milano, killed at only 19 years old. Eric was walking down the street with some friends when he came up with a prank. He was going to light a sparkler and then throw it through the second floor window of an apartment that belonged to one of his friends. The intention was to just scare whoever was inside. What Eric hadn't anticipated was that the girl inside wouldn't realize a sparkler had just been thrown into her window. The sparkler landed on the floor, started a fire, and the poor girl who was home never had any idea. She was asleep beside where the sparkler landed, and in just a few minutes, she had suffocated from smoke inhalation. Nobody even knew until they ran upstairs to put out the fire, discovering her dead body. Since the accident, Eric has been charged with manslaughter and reckless endangerment, and all because of some silly prank. Number five, toilet paper getaway. A homecoming prank had left three students dead in Georgia. A trio of teen girls were killed early one morning after their car smashed into a group of trees as they desperately fled from a friend's house where they had been pulling a prank. They were all TPing another one of their friend's houses, and it was all fun and games until the deadly car crash. The reason they were speeding away from the scene is that the owner of the house had come outside and caught them in the act. So they fled as quickly as they could. But to make matters worse, the girl who was being pranked, her parents ran out of the house, got in their pickup truck, and tried to chase the teenage girls. According to what the parents told Cobb County Police, they were just trying to get the license plate number. Whatever they were trying to do, the girls were desperate enough to speed and drive recklessly. The reckless driving landed them straight in the grave, while three other girls who were involved walked away with only minor injuries. In this case, no charges have been laid against anybody, not the parents who were trying to chase down the children, and not the other children involved in the prank. Number four, Ding Dong Revenge. A California man is in some serious trouble after intentionally driving his car into another car, resulting in the deaths of three teenage boys inside. He used his car like a battering ram to murder the poor three kids. And while they might not be completely innocent, after all, they were murdered in revenge to a prank they pulled. They still didn't deserve what happened to them. Here's how it all started. The three kids were ringing people's doorbells and then running away. It's a classic prank, one that annoys the adults but doesn't generally cause much harm. Well, when they rang the doorbell of Anurang Chandra, a 42-year-old man, things got real serious real fast. The grown man was so angry that the kids pulled this prank on him that he got into his car and started chasing them. He was in such a blind rage that he simply wouldn't let up. The teens were driving a Toyota Prius with Anurang in his Infiniti Q50. Once he finally caught up to the kids, he ran the rear end of the Prius, sent it skidding across the road, and it ultimately smashed into a tree. By the end of the day, Daniel Hawkins, Jacob Ivescu, and Drake Ruiz were all dead. The three boys were each 16 years old. The driver, who was 18, managed to survive. Honorong is now facing three counts of attempted murder and will probably face life in prison without the possibility of parole. Number three, student on fire. A bouncer thought it would be hilarious to light somebody's costume on fire at a bar. Unfortunately for everyone involved, it wasn't that funny. The guy in the costume was burned pretty severely and almost died. It happened at a nightclub in the United Kingdom. Sean Collins was celebrating his 21st birthday. He thought it would be hilarious to dress up like a sheep. He even made the costume by hand using cotton wool balls and hairspray. But when Sean was standing in the smoking area of the club, Thomas McGinnis casually flicked his lighter and set Sean's costume aflame. What's really scary about this is that Thomas had been pranking the guy all in his own head. He didn't have any accomplices. He wasn't doing it for anyone around and just thought it would be funny. But it wasn't funny when Sean turned into a giant human fireball. Even though spectators managed to put the fire out, Sean was so severely burned that he needed to go to the hospital and nearly died. He had burns across 12% of his body, mainly to his hands and forearms. He had to get skin grafts and miss the last two months of his courses at university. He also had to give up his job and now faces two years of treatment. It's a total mess, and all because a doorman at a nightclub thought he was quite the prankster. The only silver lining is that the prankster got what was coming to him. He first denied to the police that he had lit Sean's costume on fire, instead saying it was somebody's cigarette who lit the costume. Surveillance footage from the club shows a different story, as Thomas McGinnis can clearly be seen purposely lighting Sean on fire. 
He has since been jailed and will be spending 18 months locked up. Number two, the worst prank. In a disturbing case study on how kids use TikTok, a young girl was left crying and traumatized. Two 15-year-old girls decided to play an extremely cruel prank on one of their sisters. One of the girls hid inside of a closet while the friend called her sister into the room, pretended to cry, and explained that her parents had just been killed in a brutal car accident. The whole point behind the terrible prank was to get the reaction of the eight-year-old crying so that the teenage girls could post it on TikTok. Naturally, this didn't go the way the teenagers had planned. They had obviously been watching way too much TikTok for their own good. Even after they told the eight-year-old that her parents were still alive and it was all just a joke, she was horribly upset. The mothers involved were even more upset, especially since the intention had been to humiliate the child on the internet in front of millions of people. One of the parents even took away her daughter's phone for the rest of the year, refusing to give it back, even when the girl had a meltdown. It's been suggested that these kids might need therapy for their cruel act, or at least to be taught a lesson in how to be respectful humans. And number one, death by prank. A prankster from YouTube had been given six months in jail for shooting her boyfriend dead in a stunt gone horribly wrong. Mona Lisa Perez, just 20 years old, was asked by her boyfriend, Pedro Ruiz, to shoot him basically at point blank range. He was going to hold a thick book in front of his chest, believing that the book would stop the bullet from penetrating his skin. But of course, the book didn't stop anything. The bullet pierced the book, entered Pedro, and killed him. Obviously, the prankster had not intended to kill her boyfriend. She's a mother of two, and now a convicted felon. She has already pleaded guilty to second degree manslaughter. The reason she only got six months is because it had obviously been an accident. According to Norman County attorney James Bruce, the sentencing was given because everyone agreed that it was a foolish stunt dreamed up and planned by the deceased, and the defendant had relied on his assurance that the stunt would be safe. But still, she was the one that pulled the trigger. She'll have to serve 10 years of supervised probation, and she's never allowed to own another gun in her life. Plus, she can't make any money from the case. What this means is that because of her status as a YouTube content creator, she is not allowed to make any financial gain from discussing the case online. Number 10. Poker Player vs. Hairdryer Lilia Novikova, a woman dubbed Russia's sexiest poker star, was killed by her very own hairdryer back in 2019. Lilia was only 26 years old at the time of her death. She was discovered by her neighbor, lifeless and naked, in her bath. The elderly neighbor had early received an emergency phone call from the girl's parents. They were worried for Lilia's safety after they hadn't heard from her in several hours and asked the neighbor to check in. This must have been some strong parental intuition on their part because they were 100% right. Their daughter was dead. Up until this fateful day, Lilia was living a very successful life. She was skilled with numbers and even graduated from a top Russian university with a degree in engineering. But her skill with numbers brought her to gambling rather than engineering, where she made a hot fortune. She was a skilled player in real life, and she made heaps and heaps of cash by giving professional tips to amateurs online. She was famous in the Twitch community. She had 15,000 followers on Instagram, and it was generally agreed in the online world that she was the best looking poker player in the world. But alas, she's dead. According to the BBC, the Russian investigative committee confirmed that she was electrocuted in her bathroom. However, she allegedly had both her cell phone and her hairdryer plugged into the wall, meaning she could have been electrocuted by either one of them. Number nine, a rusty nail. Walmart is the home of household items and also the place where April Jones lost part of her leg. The box store supergiant has been ordered to pay $10 million to April Jones in damages for the piece of her leg that she will never get back. The reason is that she stepped on a tiny, seemingly insignificant rusty nail while shopping in the store. April Jones was walking through an aisle of her Florence branch Walmart in 2015 when she stepped on the nail. It penetrated her shoe and stuck itself right into her foot. Normally, you would just pull the nail out and go about your business, then maybe get a quick tetanus shot at the doctors. But April didn't get away so easily. Her foot got grossly infected. She had to undergo amputations and has been stuck in a wheelchair ever since. 
It's been six years since she could walk properly. She lost several toes as well as a huge piece of her right leg. According to her lawyers, April's life has been significantly interrupted. Naturally, Walmart has denied any responsibility for what happened, saying they still don't believe that April's injury was a result from the nail. But that's not the way the jury saw it, and April Jones is now down one leg and up $10 million. Number 8. The Dirty Dinner Plate A 12-year-old boy died from licking his dinner plate in a horrifyingly tragic accident. The boy's name was Kaysen Halwood, and he died on Christmas Day in the hospital after getting sick. The boy was eating dinner at his grandparents' house when he finished his meal by licking his plate clean. What nobody realized at the time was that his plate was all slimy with peanuts, or at least peanut residue. Kasson suffered from both asthma and nut allergies. Not long after licking his dinner plate clean, he began to have difficulty breathing. His mother, his three brothers, and his grandparents watched in horror as his throat began to swell and he suffered an allergic reaction. According to an inquest launched to get to the bottom of what happened, his grandfather is the one responsible for his death. His grandfather, named Albert, was the one who cooked the food. He admitted that he had completely forgotten about his grandson's allergy and glazed the Christmas gammon with nuts. When Kaysen licked his dinner plate clean, he was unwittingly slurping up all that residual glaze, sending himself into a deadly allergic reaction. This was a pretty brutal reaction. Even though the EpiPen was administered and the boy was rushed to the hospital extremely quickly, he still went into cardiac arrest and died. Number 7. Falling Planter Box In Brooklyn, a young boy was playing in his yard in Marine Park at about 5.25 p.m. It was still early, the streets were perfectly safe, and Kevin Riley was trying to climb up the front window of his house to reach a basketball that had gotten stuck. As he climbed, he grabbed hold of a planter box on the second floor. Then he tried to hoist himself up, but the huge and extremely heavy planter box broke free and he fell. Kevin hit the ground first and the planter box, probably the least deadly household item you can imagine, fell on his head and killed him. According to what eyewitnesses said, the planter box was so heavy the boy's mother couldn't get it off him. It was filled with wet soil and plants. His mother screamed for help as she tried desperately to pick the thing up and get to her son who was crushed underneath it. Luckily, one of the neighbors was smart enough to call 911. The police arrived shortly and rushed Kevin to the Coney Island Hospital, but once at the hospital, he was pronounced dead. The planter was just too heavy. It was like a concrete anvil weighed down by soil, landing right on the kid's cranium. Number 6. Not So Reusable Metal Straw A woman in England was trying to do her part to save the environment when she accidentally died. She had purchased a reusable metal straw so that she wouldn't have to use plastic ones anymore. But as she was carrying a glass home with her stainless steel straw poking out of it, she tripped and fell. The reusable metal straw, approximately 10 inches in length, impaled her eyeball and stuck in her brain. It caused a fatal brain injury and the woman, named Elena Struthers Gardner, died. But she didn't die right away. The woman's wife, Mandy, was the one who found her in the kitchen. Elena was lying on the kitchen floor with the metal straw stuck inside of her head, making gurgling noises. Mandy says the glass Elena was carrying had a screw top lid, meaning that the straw was fixed in place. It was basically a spear at that point, rigid with absolutely no give. And to make matters worse, Elena suffered from scoliosis that made her prone to falling. She was basically walking around every day with a metal spike aimed straight at her eye. It was only a matter of time until something like this happened. Would you dare to use a reusable straw now that you've learned how terrifyingly dangerous they can be? Let me know your thoughts on these tools of destruction in the comments. And don't forget to hit subscribe before the end of the video. Number 5. Fuse to a Chair in Ohio, a man who suffered from morbid obesity died after being fused to a chair for two full years. Yes, this guy literally died because he was stuck in a chair. When the police found him dead in his chair, he was so effectively stuck 
that they had no choice but to cut a hole through the wall of his house to get him outside. We don't know this individual's name, as it has been released for privacy reasons. But according to Fox News, it was his roommate who called the police when he found him unconscious. He was 43 years old when the police helped paramedics get him to the nearby Wheeling Hospital across the border in West Virginia. But shortly after he arrived at the hospital, he was pronounced dead. Now, you probably want to know why he was stuck in a chair for two years and nobody helped him to get out of it. Here's what we know about that. The man lived with two roommates. One of them was his girlfriend. He had been stuck in the living room with his skin fused to the fabric of the chair, sitting in his own waist. According to the officers on the scene, he was also sitting in a rather large pile of maggots. One of the officers even described the scene as the worst thing he had ever responded to in his entire career. The same officer told the local news that he had to throw his uniform in the garbage after helping get the guy out of the chair. But as much as we hate to admit it, we don't actually know how he got fused to the chair. We only know that he was once an active person and that somehow something went terribly wrong. In the end, it wasn't really the chair's fault. Number 4. The Apartment Trash Shoot A student from Penn State University is dead after an absolutely bizarre accident involving the trash chute at her apartment. This is 19-year-old Justine Gross. She was found in the early morning hours of November 12th at the Center County Recycling and Refuse Authority Transfer Station. The night before, she had been reported missing. Nobody could figure out just where in the world Justine went until the workers at the recycling station found her mangled corpse. From there, the police had to work backwards to figure out what happened. They soon learned that Justine fell almost a dozen floors after accidentally tumbling into the solid waste disposal chute on the 11th floor of her apartment. The fall took her right into a waste receptacle waiting on the ground floor. The truly bizarre part of the incident is that nobody really knows why she went into the chute. Some have said that somebody was chasing Justine, but the police are saying it was just an accident. She may have thought the chute was just a staircase leading down to her floor of the building. It's just too tough to say. As for how the chute actually killed her, it was probably the fall that did that. And if it wasn't from the fall, it was from when she got picked up and crushed in the garbage truck the next morning. Number 3. Ikea and the Deadly Drawers Joseph Dudek was only two years old when he became the victim of the Swedish furniture giant Ikea. It was May of 2017, and Joseph was playing in his room. There just so happened to be a dresser here that the family had picked up from Ikea to decorate their California home. The set of drawers weighed approximately 70 pounds and had been recalled the year prior over safety concerns. This was after there had been three separate accidents, all of which involved children being killed by the dresser falling on their heads. The case of Joseph turned into the largest wrongful death settlement of a child in the history of the US. The reason this particular dresser is so deadly is that it's not stable enough. With just one of the drawers extended and a bit of weight added, the entire dresser comes crashing down. So when the kid pulled out the dresser bottom drawer and put his weight on it, the dresser tipped over and crushed him underneath it. He died from suffocation before his parents finally came into the room and found him deceased. After the wrongful death lawsuit was finally settled, IKEA was ordered to pay the family $46 million in damage. Number 2. The Deadliest Table A freak accident involving a table has caused the life of a 5-year-old boy to end. The freak accident happened in Illinois while the boy was attending a family member's wedding reception. Luca Berlingario was at the event with his parents, with the event itself being hosted in the Drake Hotel in the city of Oak Brook. While Luca was socializing with the other children at the reception, a granite table fell on his head and killed him. According to Benjamin Kadoff with the local police department, it happened literally in the blink of an eye. Luca was lying on the table, which was pushed against the back of a sofa. He started to slide off the table and so he grabbed its legs to steady himself. But grabbing hold of the legs caused the table to flip over with him. It landed on his head, causing massive brain injuries. By the time he made it to the hospital, 
he was already dead. This is probably one of the most terrifying things that could happen. Someone's young kid literally being crushed by a table of all things. It's just not something you would expect. His parents certainly didn't expect it, and now they're stuck grieving and traumatized for life. Luca had just celebrated his fifth birthday the week before the accident. Number 1. Changing the Light In October of 2004, a maintenance worker was taking care of some broken light bulbs at an assisted living facility in Washington State. It should have been a simple and easy job. He only needed to unscrew the broken light bulb and then screw in the new light bulb. But in order to reach the ceiling fixture, he had to crawl into the attic. He put tape over the light switch in the room to keep it in the off position, climbed into the attic, and took off the fixture. Now he just needed to remove the broken bulb. But as he was holding on to the fixture, he touched the base of the bulb with his metal tool and was instantly electrocuted. A little while later, his co-workers realized they couldn't find the guy. They searched all throughout the property, but he seemed to have disappeared into thin air. They called 911, the fire department came, and a rescue team showed up on site to do a search. They discovered the guy inside the second floor ceiling, dead as a doornail. Nine, woman paralyzed from the waist down. In 2018, Emma Carey had been just five days into her three-month European backpacking vacation when she chose to do a tandem skydive in Switzerland. She had said, I'd always known I was going to skydive in this exact place. I wasn't nervous. I was just so pumped up to get up there and do it. When we jumped out, I remember it was the most incredible feeling. The free fall is so peaceful. You are just so present in the moment. But the sensation of exhilaration was brief for the 20-year-old wanderer. Just as she and her instructor were nearing land, she felt the instructor tug at the chutes to deploy them. I felt us slow down a bit, but the chute wasn't above us where it should be, and my instructor wasn't answering me. The closer we got to the ground, I realized something was really wrong. While the exact cause is still unknown, it appeared that the instructor released the parachute a bit too late, causing it to get intertwined with a backup chute that had been pulled at the same moment. The instructor's chutes failed to open properly and got knotted around his neck, choking him till he passed out. Emma slammed into the ground with a thud. The instructor fell on her back while she sprawled on her stomach. I kind of wish I did pass out, so I didn't remember it all, she said. She adds that it seemed like forever before anybody rushed to their rescue since they didn't land in the authorized area. We were in the middle of a field, so we had to wait for my best friend to land and get to us. They eventually managed to flag down some people nearby and use their phone to call the rescue helicopter. Emma suffered spinal cord damage at L1 after breaking her back, and she also broke a few teeth and damaged her sacrum, pelvis, and jaw. The severity of the injuries left her paralyzed from the waist down. Carrie's optimistic approach helped her heal and recover from the tragic ordeal. After spending a month in a hospital in Switzerland, she spent three months more in a hospital in Sydney. Doctors told her that she would never walk again, but several months later, she took her first steps with the help of a walking frame. She progressed into using two crutches, one crutch, and now she can walk independently. Eight. Two skydivers spiraled to the ground. Last year, an incredibly frightening video captured the instant when two skydivers spiraled to the surface following a chute impairment. From the video clip, it appears the skydivers fell fast before striking into a home at Titusville, Florida. When the chutes failed to deploy in time, a skydiving instructor and pupil were left severely injured. Both were taken to a hospital in serious condition after narrowly surviving the fall. The jump was scheduled via Skydive Space Center, and as per its Facebook page, the facility, which claims to be a home of the world's highest jumps at 18,000 feet, resumed on May 2nd after being closed to the COVID pandemic. According to the fire department, the two men were treated before being sent to the hospital. News reported that Fire Department Chief Sutton said they were responsive following the accident. 
According to a press release from the city of Titusville, the men were in grave danger following the accident. Christina Renfro, who witnessed the tragedy, said, We just watched them go down over the tree line. There was nothing you could do. He went into a pretty nasty spin. At first, we thought he was having fun and showing off, but it was pretty evident shortly after they were in trouble. Christina Renfro also posted a video of the collision on Facebook, describing, They hit the ground hard. This was a tandem jump gone horribly wrong. As they plummeted, the skydivers smashed into a tree on the front lawn of a house. The Titusville Fire Department shared photos of their parachutes intertwined with a tree branch on Facebook. A transport helicopter that carried them to the hospital was also seen in the images. According to preliminary investigation, the divers were part of a parachute jump from an aircraft that took off from Dunn Airport. The two men were given first aid and then airlifted to the nearest hospital. 7. Bear Grillis To this day, the agony of damaging his back in a parachuting mishap 25 years ago haunts Bear Grillis, the British adventurer stated in an Instagram post. The creator of the hit program Man vs. Wild indicated that he is in torment every day due to the injury. A shoot failure during a skydive in Zambia in 1996 caused the TV personality to land hard on his back. After breaking three vertebrae from the fall, at just 21 years old, Grillis had to undergo a year of therapy to regain his lost movements and strength. Fans have hailed the celebrity for his bravery and commended him for his honesty. Grillis became the youngest Brit to reach the pinnacle of Mount Everest only two years after this terrible accident. People often ask him whether his back suffers because of the parachuting mishap, which the 46-year-old addressed with a response that read, Every day. His treatment for the injury and the ongoing pain is harsh, but he believes that life is a fight for everyone. He also said that he takes cold treatment every day to maintain his body and mind in good shape. He is thankful for the chance at life and chooses to live it to the fullest. 6. Lone Survivor Dan Brodsky Chenfield, a veteran skydiver, survived the world's deadliest skydiving accident. On April 23, 1992, a group of 22 people boarded a small aircraft for what was to be routine skydiving. Dan had been skydiving since the year 1980 and he was a true professional. All that Dan remembers is that the jet soared into the sky. The next moment, he woke up in the middle of a dream, unsure of what had occurred but convinced that something was seriously wrong. Dan was unable to move. It turned out it had already been six weeks since the plane had taken off. Dan was in the hospital, having just awoken from a coma. He later found out that 16 of the 22 people on board had died, while the others were seriously wounded. Dan was then informed that the aircraft they had taken up to skydive from had crashed. Dan himself had broken several bones, including his neck and skull. One of his lungs had collapsed too. He was extremely fortunate to have survived. Doctors treated Dan's injuries and he went on to jump again in the future. He didn't let the event derail his professional aspirations. Dan delivered presentations and established himself as a motivational figure in the skydiving world. He often talks about his near-death experience and triumphs to inspire others to succeed and prevail in life, despite all odds. In professional skydiving, he is known as one of the biggest competitive skydivers. This was one skydiving incident where the mishap occurred even before the divers took the plunge from the ill-fated aircraft. So you see, it's not only about the landing or the chutes opening in time. The dive in itself can go wrong in many ways. 5. Nine People Killed In an accident similar to the 1992 skydiving aircraft crash, a small aircraft transporting a party of skydivers plummeted in Sweden this year. The DHC-2 Beaver single-engine aircraft crashed near the runway and soon erupted into flames only minutes after departure from the Arebo airport. All nine people on board were killed. Authorities said that everyone on board the crashed plane has died. 
As per authorities and Arebo County Governor Maria Larson, the aircraft was carrying the pilot and eight passengers, all of whom were members of a local skydiving club. According to Peter Swaffer, a department manager at the Swedish Accident Investigation Authority, the plane didn't get up very high before it went down to the left on the runway. Carl Johan Linde, a spokesperson for the Swedish Maritime Administration, said the disaster had to have happened in connection with the plane's departure. The mishap was reported around 7.30 p.m., and Prime Minister Stefan Lofgren said that he learned of the crash with great sadness and dismay. 4. Self-Sacrifice Elijah Aronsa's experience is one of disaster, triumph, and self-sacrifice. This incident is noteworthy since he was just 14 years old when the skydiving catastrophe happened. It was November 2015, and Elijah Arantz was all set to skydive in Goulburn, New South Wales, Australia. He was scheduled for a tandem jump with a coach responsible for taking him on the adventure, a 44-year-old expert, Tony Rokoff. On a beautiful day that was perfect for skydiving, the two went out for a tandem jump, and during their descent, an unexpected blast of wind smacked the divers, causing their chute to fail. The man and the youngster crashed into each other and were very quickly closing in towards the surface in a near free fall. Tony Rokov, the instructor, had spent his whole life in the Australian military and was also a former Special Forces diver. He managed to tuck himself beneath the youngster and pulled the boy over himself as they continued to come crashing down towards the ground. This brave act provided the boy a barrier between himself and the impacting surface. When the two crashed, paramedics raced to the scene. The officer's heroic act had miraculously spared Elijah Aronsa's life. Rokov died in the most heroic way military personnel would. He gave up his life to save another. Tony Rokov was posthumously honored with the Star of Courage, an honor bestowed upon just 170 Australians since the 1970s. Have you tried skydiving? While these accidents are terrifying, most jumps are excellent fun and uneventful. Share your experiences with us in the comments below. Loving this video? Don't forget to give us a like and a share. Make sure you subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. 3. Father of Two Died A man's holiday turned tragic when a tandem skydiving jump in the Great Grand Canyon resulted in a catastrophe. Christopher Swalls was offered the trip as a beautiful 30th anniversary gift from his loving wife Deborah in 2019. He traveled from the United Kingdom for his much-awaited jump into the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon has drawn skydivers from all corners of the world as it offers some of the most spectacular aerial views possible, but in this case it turned out to be a nightmare. Swalls had booked a package from Paragon Skydive Institute and was scheduled to jump with the firm's instructor. Though most of the leap went well, soon they found themselves in a free fall, closing in on the landing zone. Way sooner than they'd anticipated. Officials claim they landed hard. Swalls died on the spot after suffering grievous injuries, and the instructor, Matthew McConnell, fractured his leg. An inquiry later revealed that Swalls had died of blunt force injuries. According to the detectives who studied the parachute, they discovered patches sewn into the cloth near the tip of the chute. The material's defect holes appear to be ringed to detect movement. According to a statement released by the owner of Paragon Skydiving, Jason Thuma, who organized the jump, he saw no trouble with the chute during the descent. He believed the instructor panicked as he approached land, executing a forceful left turn, and the chute was thrown off balance and took a sharp turn downwards. After weighing all the possibilities and the probabilities of the accident, it was concluded that Swalls' death was purely accidental. It seems that's how tandem landings sometimes work, when one person perishes while the other survives. 2. Stuck in Power Lines 
Sometime this year, a Californian skydiver's parachute got caught in live power wires, and he was left dangling 30 feet above the ground for at least an hour. According to local news, the mystery parachuter was left entangled in the wires for approximately 60 minutes in Lake Elsinore, California's southern region. The identity of the diver remains unclear. Power technicians and emergency personnel worked to release the guy, who was seen hanging in the wind with a yellow parachute opened above him. This is in several social media photographs. The individual was hauled down, utilizing a bucket lift. Firefighters examined the untangled man and evacuated him to a local hospital by ground ambulance. He suffered minor injuries to his lower limbs. The parachute was later removed from the wires by Southern California Edison. Once he touched down, footage of the rescue showed the guy limping around from the injuries he had suffered. He was lucky to have escaped with minor injuries. Considering he fell over the power lines, all of us know that things could have gone in an extremely unfortunate different direction. 1. A 9,000 feet free fall After being entangled in his chute while attempting a challenging jump, a skydiver plummeted from a height of 9,000 feet. And guess what? He survived. Yes, he did survive, but he was left with several shattered bones and a brain injury. Victor Brahe, 27, of Winter Haven, Florida, had planned to perform the canopy relative work technique with another skydiver, Sean Phillips, also 27, of the United Kingdom. This technique requires the skydivers to pile their parachutes below the other as part of the joint crew's mid-air formation. Phillips had said that he and Brahe both leaped from 14,000 feet. Phillips was above Brahe at 9,000 feet and reported that Brahe came up beneath him too quickly with an open chute. The lines of the parachute entrapped both men. Phillips' parachute was still available as they fell but Brahe's was entirely closed in. The collision occurred in 2018, and Brahe was discovered crashing along a fence by county authorities. Brahe was whirling horizontally and was completely bound by his own chute lines. His parachute was only half open. Phillips, on the other hand, was able to release himself at roughly 3,000 feet. Brahe was flown to the nearest hospital by helicopter, where he was found to have suffered several fractured bones and an internal brain injury. He was later found to be in a severe but fair condition. Skydiving is a thrilling experience for adrenaline junkies seeking their next big high. However, it sometimes can have dire consequences. Out of all the stories, which one surprised you the most? Share with us in the comments section below. Make sure you hit the bell icon for more updates and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye.